Hi, Lou DeJena here. In the vise, I have what I believe to be an authentic Frank Sawyer pheasant tail nymph, which was gifted to me quite a while back. As you can see, there are just two materials in this fly, copper wire and pheasant tail fibers. To learn more about Frank Sawyer's flies and how he fished them, I recommend Nymphs and the Trout by Frank Sawyer. It's an out-of-print book, but you should be able to find a used copy, second edition most likely. For hooks, I recommend using a stout 2x strong hook that's only 1x long. Uh, here I have a actually a Mustad size 15 33.99 which is very close in size to the fly I have here. Uh, size 15 or the odd size flies were typically found in Europe, UK predominantly and in the US this would be equivalent to basically a 14 or a 16. It's in between obviously uh, the numbering system. Here is a 14 Mustad 33.99 you can see it's just a hair bigger than the fly that's there. I also have, in this case, a size 13, which in the U.S. would be a size 12 of the 1399. These are old hooks, uh, vintage hooks. They're hard to come by, so equivalent, equivalent hooks would be the S80 Mustad 3906. It's another heavy wire hook uh, that you can find available at any purveyor of fly tying materials as well as uh, there are partridge hooks which can work. Another hook I like to use for this pattern though this is a size 14 2302. It's a 2x long hook uh, but it is a heavy wire hook and it's not the heaviest wire but you can see it says for caddis, hoppers, stoneflies, and terrestrials. But I like the uh, natural curve of the hook. It's a little longer but it will work uh, for this pattern if you have fibers that are long enough. So besides a wire you're going to need a center tail from a cock pheasant. I'm lucky enough to have, let's see, get the one I have here and that I do have fibers that you can see here are close to two inch uh, move the camera move this down that are close to two inches in length you'll have to hunt for uh, fibers that are like that but you can find them so in Frank Sawyer's book he mentions uh, using transformer wire or windings from a transformer so it would be a dark brown wire uh, this actually is extra small in this case uh, in the UTC I can say that the wine color is quite close there's a wire I use as para wire this happens to be you know, 32 thousandths of an inch, which is similar to brassy, which is a little um, thick for this pattern. But if you're going to tie on the 2302, uh, this wire will work quite well. Uh, here's that para wire in the more transformer color. But you can use any wire. So, like I said, um, I can have a red wire. This is a UTC small red. We can use a hot orange. Can even use an olive. Something I like is this happens to be called baby pink. Uh, this is a purple. There's a more bright green. But as far as 
the wire you use, uh, whatever you have available. Okay, to start, I'm going to try to tie this with a traditional hook. The Mustad 3399, in this case in the size 15. I have about a three foot section of wire off of the spool. Now in the book he talks about uh, starting at the rear of the hook. I'm going to start at the front just a little bit before the eye and get my jam knot going there. Work my way. I'm also going to then break away my tag end. And what I like to do is build my thorax before I head back. And I'll start going back, keeping the fly nice and slender in doing this way. Just a little less bulk. What's nice about using the copper wire and a heavy gauge hook is that is the weight for the fly. Okay, I'm going to cut away. Well, in the book, he mentions using four fibers, so I'll try that. I'll cut away four fibers. He also says to have it about an eighth of an inch as far as the length of the tail. Two, three. So it's very secure. And now what you need to do, and this is hard with a camera in the way, is wrap the pheasant tail around your wire. Don't put too much of a wrap because you may break your fibers. Just make sure everything's nice and even. And now bring it forward. Covering, when you get to, at this point, the eye of the hook, you want to take out some of those wraps that you put in there. lock that off and what we're going to do is now bring our thread not thread wire back towards the thorax bringing our pheasant tail that back so we can have the wing case I'm going to advance it forward to the eye again bring it forward just have everything in line I'm going to do a pinch wrap around that eye. Go back to the rear of the thorax in this case and at that point I'm going to now do a hand whip finish with one, two, three. Now when working with wire and whip finishing or even half hitches just keep good constant steady pressure on there otherwise and now once I have that at that spot, I'm just going to fray the t wire until it breaks, lift up my pheasant tail fibers and snip the excess off of the rear. And there is a Sawyer's pheasant tail nymph tied as described in his book. Okay, I'm going to start, do the jam knot, and 
just fret the wire off and build up my thorax. Now also in the book, Frank Sawyer mentions uh, that the color of the wire does influence the pattern and that uh, he did pick wire color that would show through in the pattern and also be part of the pattern. So I don't think it's outside the realm that if he had colored wire when he was around doing this, that if he found colored wire that worked, better than what he was using, I'm sure he would have used it. At least that's what I think. Okay, I'm going to grab four fibers again in this case. Typically I pick more when I do my own, closer to six. All right, if you wanted to, you can do the measure, you know, the shank length, but I'll keep it a little bit more traditional as far as that eighth of an inch that he recommends. All right two in this case. Now the bobbin helps you work a little easier. Well, I'm going to go three. I don't think it's secure enough. And now wrap the pheasant tail around the wire. And in this case bring them all forward. Now I'm going to try to cover up those last little bits. You can see the wire does show through. I'm going to lengthen this a little bit. I'm holding both the wire and the pheasant tail going all the way forward to the eye. In this case I'm going to make sure I lock that in. Coming back to the thorax, coming back to the eye. Now there's a little bigger hook and I didn't grab the longest fibers, but I should be able to get the last one in there, so I'll come over to the back. So having good quality pheasant tail is really important. I've got two wraps there. And I'll do this just with a half hitch this time, just so you can see. You can't secure that with a half hitch. I'm going to put a second one in there. It's going to be a little harder to get underneath here, but I'll lift up those fibers and trim them away. Now it probably wouldn't hurt to put a little super glue or in this case a little solar res bone dry just right there on the wire wraps cure it to make sure they stay in place so that's just using a brighter copper wire so it has a little bit of flash but still in keeping with the traditional as much as possible okay so this is the UTC small hot orange extra small would be better but that's what I have on hand so basically building up the thorax will take less wraps fret the wire get a nice clean break I'm just gonna build up my thorax just a little bit 
you can see it's spitting on me. If I want a little super glue there, wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay, I think that's good as far as my thorax. Go to the bend of the hook, basically in line with the barb. Nice touching turns. Wrap. Okay, let me get some fibers. I prefer cutting uh, the fibers off of the pheasant tail. Just makes life a little easier. Lock that in. Let me use one wrap this time, see if it'll, how well. No, nope, we're gonna have to go two at least. Same, same procedure as before. Take my pheasant tail, wrap it around the wire. Without disturbing the tails, now bring it all the way forward. Actually, sorry, I'm going to tie this version where I'm going to actually now back that off. I'm going to build up this thorax just a touch, and I want to have that red. In this case, that hot red or hot orange exposed on the bottom. I'm going to go the wing case in the back. I'm going to come underneath, come to the front in that one sweep and move. Now, in the book, he does talk about uh, developing a real pronounced thorax. So that's what I did there. And we'll just do two half inches. I think will be sufficient. Things moved a little bit, so I'm just going to shift them back. Really tighten down a knot and just fret my wire until it breaks. Come in with my scissors and trim it. And now, just so that everything holds together a little bit more, this is a totally optional step, is I'm going to put some Solares bone dry here on the bottom and on those thread wraps up top. And I'm just using that in lieu of super glue. And now just going to cure the Solares bone dry. And so there's another version of the Sawyer's pheasant tail nymph. In this case, using the wire for the thorax to basically give a hot spot, a little bit more color still keeping the general shape and size of the pheasant tail nymph. So you can think about if you wanted to have more like a traditional or American pheasant tail where you would use peacock, you know, a nice bright green wire could be quite nice. Uh, if you want, you can also dull it down with a little bit of olive, uh, or we can get royal and use something more in the purple or lavender. So there's the version that's got the wire thorax. The version using copper wire. And the most traditional version using a dark uh, brown wire uh, keeping it very slim and very small. And then finally,
the OG pheasant tail. Hope that helps you and tie up some. They're very effective in any water. Tie them to the sizes you need for the stream you're at. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. This will be a lot easier if I didn't have a camera in front of me. Okay, this will reinforce and ha have those fibers go through. Now, we're going to start wrapping our body. And I can see already that this broke. So I'll have to start all over again.